forget about their set, because as we all know, the content is the most important part of your video, and it'll always be the most important part of your video. But the content can sometimes uh, be enhanced further by your set design, because your set will set the mood for everything. If your blog is a daily lifestyle blog and you're super happy and upbeat, you're gonna wanna have lots of bright colors and textures in your background to make sure that your set reflects the content. And you also wanna make sure that your set is not going to distract from your content as well. So it's really important, even if you're just doing casual blogging, to make sure that you put a little bit of thought into your background, a little bit of time, and make sure that you're able to really complement your awesome videos that you work so hard on. Um, I wanted to start the presentation with this lovely giant picture of Chris Hardwick. Um, this is from the Fine Brothers Entertainment show, Celebs React. Um, this is the earlier version of the show, Celebs React, that we did when we were first testing out the format before we ended up doing a full series run uh, with full screen. So, um, the guys at FBE called me up and asked me to make a, a talk show set. So the goal here was to make it look like a more fun, more casual version of a talk show. Um, and that can be pretty tough. As you can see, there's a lot of complicated things going on here. And there was a very tight budget. So I wanted to really give you an example of the kind of things that you can accomplish if you get really creative with how you go about it. So a quick rundown of what's in the background here. This entire black and white cityscape that you see is just foam core that I bought from the craft store and um, carved with an X-Acto knife. And then I bought little gray squares of paper and just placed them all along the building. So you have what ends up looking like it's some sort of custom wood built cityscape um, that is you know, easily DIY'd and anyone can kind of do. Um, and then below that, you have all the shelves with the yellow background where I use one of my favorite set design tricks which is to buy shelves and then put colored paper behind it. And what's so great about this is you can get these shelves from Ikea and um, you can swap, swap out the paper for any different set. You can do different colors and it really results in a much more high-end look without um, having to get super custom with it. Um, and then it's just some strategically placed props all around to really make it, uh, to really make it pop. So you can see almost all of the sets that I've built, they basically come from a craft store, and I want to teach you guys how you can do that as well. Um, in, order to, in order to make a good set, you don't have to be a professional, but there are a couple things that come from the fine arts world that are important to know. So, whoops, there we go. The first thing I want to talk about is the rule of thirds, which you might all be familiar with because they have this grid on Instagram now. If you go to upload a picture on Instagram, you'll see these lines, they won't be red. Um, but what the rule of thirds is, it comes from photography and fine arts it's, and film, it's all about composition for your images. So this also goes into you know how you're gonna film and everything where you're gonna put the subject but it's important to consider it for your background as well. And what the rule of thirds is, is it's um, the concept that you should place the interesting parts of your shot at the intersections of the lines. So where you see the lines intersect is where you should try to put your subject, or in this case, your background. And then the rule of thirds also suggests that you could put the horizon of your picture at the top or the bottom horizontal line. So this design is actually an example of using the rule of thirds to make the picture look much more visually interesting. So you can see um, the cityscape actually right behind it, there's some mountains, and so that would be the horizon, and it lines up right with that top line up there. Um, and you might not know, well, you definitely wouldn't notice it if you're just watching the episode, but um, from a visual standpoint, it really helps your eye move around, it helps you you know, look sort of at Chris Hardwick's face and then your eye moves to the bottom uh, left hand and kind of around in a circle, which is exactly what you want when you do a set design. Um, so after seeing a picture like this, a lot of people think like, wow, I don't have a whole giant studio I can dedicate to a huge set like this. Like I'm making videos in my bedroom or in my kitchen and it's a dual use space. So I wanna show you an example. Um, this is Candy Johnson. She is a popular um, 
blogger and makeup artist. She's amazing. I highly recommend her videos. She made a video that I love where she actually shows you the behind the scenes of her set. So you can see here, this is her bedroom, actually. And what she's done here is she dragged her desk to be right in front of a window so she can get that natural lighting. Um, and she's just piled all of this stuff on her dresser behind her. And it looks like a total, complete mess. Like, you would never want to put this in your shot. But that's what it looks like on camera. So you really only need one little square of your shot to be set up and nice. And the rest of your room or your kitchen or your office could be a complete disaster and no one will ever know. So I always like to show this example for people. Um, and this is also a really good example of lighting. As I mentioned, she does have all these big lights here, but actually the best lighting is always gonna be natural light. So if you can set up your set in front of a window, um, that's gonna be your best option. Although you have to make sure you don't film when the sun is setting or rising, because that will mess up with your lighting. Um, so I wanna move on to a simpler example. So this is Grace, Grace Helbig, and this is um, one of her sets. I can't remember what show this is for. I think this is for her original podcast set, perhaps. But I always like to show this because it's so, 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 so simple and clean. And it's literally just a chair with a couch um, and a table with a plant. And the reason this works is because of the texture. A lot of people forget about the texture. So if she just had this brick background and that cute little shelf decal, her set would feel really cold. And because of what she's doing, she's vlogging, she's talking to the camera, trying to connect with her audience, you want your audience to feel warm and fuzzy inside. And a lot of that is gonna come from you and your personality or your show or your content. But believe it or not, a lot of that's also gonna come from your set design. So in this case, the, the plant that's on the table and then the two cushions behind her, they are actually adding texture and depth to the space. And, and further um, complementing this, this idea that she's being warm and friendly and talking to you. And it's one of the most common things that people forget. So once you're done with your set, even if you just you know, thumbtack a curtain in the corner or you throw some pillows on the floor or put them in a chair or just add a little plant, those are all good, good examples. You can also put a blanket you know, over your couch. Just anything in your room that is actually warm and fuzzy will translate across the screen. So I always recommend that. Um, moving on, you can also go the very simplistic route. This is I Justine, and she is known for her um, simple white backgrounds, like in the style of Apple. Um, this is not that hard to accomplish, but a lot of people try to do it and they fail. And I can tell you that a poorly accomplished all white set is actually a lot of times worse than just building up a whole set and not trying to go the simplistic route. The reason is it has to be lit properly. And so the way that she filmed hers is she has a giant, perfectly white painted wall with like a thousand lights pointed at it. The lighting is so, so, so important and it's important for it to be even because when you have a white wall, the shadows um, become so stark and high contrast. Um, so this is a very cool way of getting a modern, simplistic style, um, but it's all about the lighting. And um, the other common mistake people make with this type of setup is sitting too close to the wall. So believe it or not, she's probably sitting five feet away from her wall, even though it looks like she's right next to it. And it kind of gives an automatic blur and you think it's an all white wall, like who needs a blur? But there is actually a depth of perspective that's very, very subtle that your eye is picking up on to make it look that much more professional and high quality. So if you're gonna go with the simplistic route, I recommend really getting your lighting down and making sure you don't shove yourself way up against the wall because your audience will actually be able to kind of feel that you're in this enclosed space like that and it will feel very cold. Um, okay. I'm gonna move on to some more examples for Fine Brothers Entertainment, which I mentioned in the beginning. Um, this was one of the earlier sets that we did, maybe three or four years ago. Um, and so what's back here, these blue squares, it's actually a painting with a stencil. Um, and this design is an example of when you need an extremely um, multi-use, almost generic type of set design, this is the sort of thing you can do. A lot of people make, I don't know, maybe you have three or four different kinds of shows, but you only have space for one set. 
So a design like this, that's abstract, that's multi-purpose, could potentially be your solution. And um, I, I, so I painted this by hand, which was <laughs> terrible. In hindsight, you could actually just go to the store and buy patterned um, colored paper and tape that all over your wall, which is what I would recommend. And it, you can achieve this great textured effect um, for very little effort. And one of the, the reasons we designed it this way with all these little dots is because um, you have to think about the different subjects that you're filming. So if it's just you and you're always going to be the same space away from your camera, then you don't have to worry about it as much. But if you have two different people and they're very different sizes or you have different subjects and they're going to move around, your set has to look interesting and good whether you zoom way into it or zoom way out of it. You don't want to zoom way into your set and now you're just looking at a blank wall when the rest of your set is well decorated. So to give you an example of that, here we're pretty zoomed out, but then for a little, little five-year-old kid, we have to zoom way in. And this is why we went with the dots, the halftone dot pattern for this design, because no matter how close you zoom, there's always something interesting, and it has continuity. Like there's a big difference in um, zoom level between these two pictures, but you can see that your eye does not pick up on it. As far as you're concerned, it's the same set, the same background, and you have that visual continuity. So it's very important when you're designing to not have any big empty spaces that will totally lose their visual interest um, if you zoom in or if you have to pan the camera. And then on the other side, if you plan your set and then you ever want to zoom way out, you have to plan for that as well. So if you think you're never going to see the top of your set, but then you stand up one day, maybe you want to put some pillows up there, or I usually, the top of most of my sets is I try to put a shelf with some plants up there to protect in case you decide randomly to zoom out, there's something interesting to look at. Um, moving on. So this is the set of um, the FBE show Kids React, which this was actually a version that we did, which was Cats React. Um, and the reason I have this example in there is because when you're filming something like a cat, you have no control over where they're going to go on the set. You can't tell the cat, like, sit there and stay so I can zoom in and perfectly focus. This cat actually looks like he did a really good job doing that. Um, but one of the thing I want, things I want to talk about with this set is that um, you want your details to be real. So if you see this bookshelf, it's not just a picture of a bookshelf, um, and it's not you know, just made out of paper and it's going to collapse. It's actually a real bookshelf that I built, and then all the books in here are real books that are covered with paper and candles, and there's some pencils in there as well. Um, and the reason for that is that it adds depth. If you remember the picture of Grace that we looked at in the beginning, she just had a picture of a bookshelf which worked for her aesthetic, but you can see how a real bookshelf, um, it adds some shadows in there and it adds some depth, and then it becomes especially um, interesting when the cat crawls into the bookshelf. So obviously none of the kids on our Kids React set, I hope, would ever crawl into the bookshelf, but um, when I designed this set, I had no idea that there would ever be cats crawling around on it, but you want, this is an example of wanting to make your sets very versatile and very comprehensive because you never know what could happen on them and you never know how the people on your set is going to interact. In the very first slide I showed you with um, Chris Hardwick in it, it had a, a, like a box of popcorn that was part of the set and when he was there he actually picked it up and like shook it all around and so thank god there was real popcorn in there to like fly all over the place to make what he was doing make sense otherwise it would have just been very weird. So I encourage you as much as possible to use real live objects in your set design. And then I just have another picture of a cat because it's really cute. <laughs> yeah. So um, I do want to talk more about this set from a design standpoint um, because it also uses the rule of thirds. Um, and it's also a little trick. You see the canvas in the corner up there. The reason you only see a corner of the canvas is because if you saw the whole square, it would be almost impossible to properly frame your camera every single time. If there was a, like, you had to perfectly get the edges uh, a perfect right angle every single time, if it was just a little bit off when you're editing it, it's going to look terrible, it's going to look very unprofessional. And so that's why you'll see a lot of set designs, there'll never be an actual full bookshelf or an actual full painting. You always want them to be going off in the corners, so that way, camera gets bumped and your framing is ever a little bit off, no one will be able to tell because they're only able to see a partial 
um, amount of the set. Um, a little background of how this was made. This was actually just a canvas and some chalk and some rulers that were pasted around it. So again, it's very easy DIY. And then the background is chalkboard paint, which I also highly recommend because it's reusable, right? You can erase the chalkboard and put whatever you want on there. So I, I always recommend chalkboards. And um, chalkboard paint comes in literally any color that you want. So you could have a pink chalkboard or a blue one or whatever color. Um, and you know, a fun part of your set, like a good audience engagement thing that I've done in the past is when you have a chalkboard as your set, you can ask your audience what you should draw on the chalkboard for each episode. And then every episode you just have this hidden Easter egg where you have a different chalk drawing back there. So when you have sets that are easily changeable like that, there's fun little fan interaction moments that you can do with them that also helps to enhance your content. Um, okay, so. I want to move into some before and afters and talk about um, you know, some real YouTubers and real bloggers uh, that I've worked with and also ones that are just you know, a part of our community and the real difference that your set design makes. So this is the first one. This is a creator. His name is Nice Peter. He is a co-creator of Epic Rap Battles of History. But before he made that show, he was a vlogger. So just like many of you probably you know, used to sit in his bedroom and talk to the camera. And this shot looks pretty good. It's just the corner of his bedroom. And you can see back there, people started sending him fan mail, and which is an amazing thing that happens when you start to make videos and people start to watch them. And they, they take their time out of their day and they draw you a picture, they write you a letter, and then they actually go to the mailbox, which like, who even does that anymore? And they buy a stamp and they mail you a letter and then you get to go and open it. And like, it's, it's such an incredible thing that happens uh, in our industry. And so, a lot of YouTubers want to honor that by displaying it. And so you've probably seen a lot of videos that just have this like crumpled, weird wall of fan art behind it. And it's, it's cool for the 